Hey guys, this is Mars Kapadia, and today I am here to show you how I created my very own mind control remote control car. To start off this project, I actually completed this project in the ninth grade alongside my sister, and I chose to upgrade this project in the junior year. The first generation of this project utilized the TGAM1 chip by Neurosky. I chose this chip because it is able to output raw, unprocessed EEG brainwaves. This chip also incorporates its own processing, which outputs it into brainwaves alongside Neurosky's very own patented attention and meditation values. Within the headset, I have the MKR1010, which wirelessly sends the data using the IoT infrastructure. I chose this because I got the MKR1010 in the Opla IoT kit. The Opla IoT, IoT kit was sent over to my, me by Arduino, and this kit was really revolutionary because of the first take at using the Internet of Things infrastructure in open source technology that is very easily accessible by the consumer. Using this chip, I am able to wirelessly send the brainwaves to multiple sources at one time, where that can be the Opla IoT app on my phone, or the internet by using the 12 month subscription that's available in the box. This chip allows me to send the data using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Alongside this chip, I'm using the RF module, which is sends data at 433 MHz from the headset to the car wirelessly. This brainwave data is sent to the car so that the car can then adapt this data in order to transfer it into movements. The way you think represents how the car moves, and you can change your thought process to change the way the car moves. On the car side, I have the Elegoo Arduino Uno R3, and I built my own motor shield using the L293D. I chose to do my own motor shield instead of buying the pre-built shields by using my own breadboard, and because it would be a little bit fun, instead of doing PCB making, I could just stick to using a breadboard and kind of make my own PCB. With the L293D, it's able to use both the car's motors for turning and directional in the back so that I can map the brain waves onto any sort of speed, direction, and distance that I would like. How the car works is it moves based on your attention values. If you are more attentive, you will go forward and to the right. If you are less attentive, you will go backwards and to the left. To explain the tension value in more detail, it represents your ability to focus on a single task at the same time. This allows you to very easily control the way the car moves, as you can easily be unfocused on the car's direction, or you can really focus. By going forward and right and back to the left, you're able to cover all degrees of motion so that you can effectively get the car to move in any way that you want. I have built three versions of this car. The first version actually used a phone case from my dad's old phone, and I used that phone case alongside a wired setup. How it worked was I used, the, I used the raw unprocessed data and then I soldered wires to the TX and RX chips of the TGAM1 chip. This then connected to the car directly. The downsides of this approach is that obviously since it was wired, it wasn't able to go as far. From there I upgraded to using the Bluetooth modules. I used the HC05 Bluetooth module in the headset and on the car, but the issue with that was that I had to worry about voltage shifting. I didn't use the voltage shifter, so sooner or later the modules became un unreliable. From there I have the third version where I actually utilize a custom 3D printed case, I utilized IoT infrastructure with the MKR1010, and I switched over to using 433 MHz RF frequency so that I can wirelessly send the data to the car and to a third party either research institution or yourself so that alongside the car moving you can analyze and map the user's brainwaves. Here, we can also see the car being used to display the brainwaves on a graph with a processing function. This processing function is open source and it's able with, it's made able with the brain library. From this processing function, you can see that in even the wired version is able to do all the same tasks as the wireless version. The wireless version, utilizing the MKR1010, is actually able to use these and project the data over the web so you can go from the LAN to the WAN. I also 3D printed the case because with the case I used an SLA printer, the Mars 2 Pro 3D. I used this printer because Elgu actually sent it out to me, but what I really liked was that since it used a 2K screen, in my case that I printed from a Thingiverse file, it actually had rails, and since I used high resolution I was able to actually use those rails seamlessly without somehow polishing it. The benefit of using a resin approach instead of the more traditional FLA filament is that instead of having FLA melted over in terms of small layers, you have a layer that is equivalent to the x-axis of the object that you are printing, and those layers are much, much more fine, allowing a resolution of, a resolution of 2K and 4K. 
From here, I have this 3D printed case, which I attach to the car. I also chose to use the Aligu Arduino Uno because it made for a very good experience and Aligu's products are overall very good. Hey guys, here's a quick disclaimer. This video is sponsored by Aligu. Aligu is gracious enough to send over the Mars 2 Pro 3D printer, which uses SLA technologies, which basically means it uses resin instead of the standard filament. I chose to use a resin printer as I wanted the high accuracy and the overall one block finished idea instead of the multiple layers. They also sent over the transparent resin, which allowed me to make the case on the car from the, before the phone case to now the new resin-based case. Huge thanks to Elegoo for sending this out, and you can go check out their printers in the link below.